Welcome to Whisperwood Stories. Today, our story is from MWMN19. Let's begin. Everyone in my city disappeared, and I am unable to leave. Part 2 The massive horde appeared at the end of the street. The mass of monsters was strong enough to destroy the street lamps, limiting my visibility. But they were close enough together so if the bullet missed one, another is guaranteed to be hit. My hands trembled. I took a deep breath. I calmed my hands and put my finger on the trigger. Here we go, I said as I started to pull it, signaling the start of the battle. The smaller ones went down with a single bullet, while the bigger ones appeared to be sturdier and I had to take multiple shots at them to kill them. Nonetheless, I didn't cease firing. They were coming closer and closer. My semi-auto was accurate, the years of playing shooters finally paying off as I knew how to operate the weapon. But I still wasn't a trained soldier. My reload was slow and sloppy. The gun jammed a couple of times as I shot at the quickly approaching horde. They slammed into the barricade below and had held. But for how much longer? The boards were sturdy and I blocked the entrance with as many heavy things as I possibly could. I aimed my rifle directly below, shooting blindly into the wave of monsters who weren't as organized as I originally thought. I had faith in the barricade, and even if they broke through, they had to pass the barricade on the staircase, for I could kill them one by one. As I focused on the horde below, a horrifying roar could be heard in the distance. What the hell is it now? I shouted to myself as I glanced up towards the street to see what produced the bone-chilling sound. I could see one of those monsters. An apt description for it would be an oversized gorilla. Its body was 100% muscle, and its arms were thicker than my entire body. You've gotta be kidding me, I shouted as I returned my eyes toward the horde below, only to see one of the tall bastards at the corner of my eye, staring at me level. The thing just appeared out of nowhere, and it had to hunch over to level its gaze with my own. Before I could aim my rifle at it, it grabbed the muzzle with incredible strength, so much that it flattened it, rendering the rifle completely useless. Then I just threw it into the crowd below. I shouted as I fiddled for my pistol while one of its long arms were reaching toward me. I took a shot at its arms and it recoiled, shrieking in pain. I managed to empty the clip into its face. The sadistic smile never faded from it. It finally fell down, crushing a few of its comrades. Before I could sigh in relief, I remembered the hulking gorilla. It was much closer, and it was charging at full speed. I tried shooting it with the pistol, but it was useless. I prepared for the barricade below to collapse with its charge, but instead of going towards the barricade and trampling the lot of them in the process, it jumped. And it jumped high enough to evade the crowd below. As it closed towards the window, I fell on the floor expecting it to crush me. But instead of the wall crumbling in front of me, I heard a crash. Then silence, beside the shouts of the horde below. I got up and looked down to see where the hulking monster went. I was met with the faceless head of the monster. It hung on the wall, having its fingers dug into it. I didn't take that into consideration. 
The creature roared as its other hand dug into the wall. It was climbing towards me. I shot at it with the pistol, but it didn't so much as wince at the bullets. Thick-skinned bastard! I shouted as I retreated inside. Going through my bag, I retrieved one thing I found at the police station that would still be of use in this situation, and braced myself. The creature got to the window, and destroyed the wall of which the window was on, making a massive hole. I shot at it akimbo style with both of my pistols until the ammo was depleted. It charged towards me. I was able to dodge, but its charge brought down a support beam of the attic. I could clearly hear the roof was settling down, ready to collapse at any moment. I had no other choice. I removed the safety pin and threw the grenade towards the creature. And instead of charging, the dumb giant looked at the frag curiously picking it up with its thumb and index finger. The creature let out an ear-piercing roar of pain. Its hand was completely mutilated by the blast. At the same time, I heard the barricade below break. I quickly reloaded one of my pistols and continued shooting at the giant. This time, I aimed at the wound. With each bullet that successfully entered the open wound, it staggered back towards the stairs. I could hear the crowd below entering the building. They started coming up the stairs. The barricade at the staircase was useless. And as I saw the first creatures round the corner coming into sight, the massive gorilla tripped and fell down upon them. It crushed the unlucky bastards who were the first ones to come up, and blocked the path for the rest. I had to be quick though. I looked down through the hole the giant had made. I saw the horde was still funneling through a small opening that was made. I waited for it just a few moments, so that most of them were in the building. I could hear them starting to push the hulking creature who was still roaring in pain. Screw it! I shouted as I made a leap of faith to the street below. I fell down a few meters behind the horde. They didn't seem to notice me at first, but as I got up, some of them shrieked, signaling the rest that I was outside. I got up and started sprinting. If I did break anything, I wasn't feeling it because of the adrenaline. I ran towards my car. There weren't many of them outside still, so I managed to get in, but the ignition wasn't working. Come on, come on, I ain't in a movie, goddammit, I said as I turned the key repeatedly, and the engine finally roared to life. Just as some of the creatures were close enough to get to the car, I put it into reverse and pressed the pedal to the middle, running over some of the monsters who emerged from the alleys. As I made it to the small intersection, I pressed the clutch and pressed the brake slightly, turning my wheel as fast as I could. I turned the car 180 degrees in a flash, just like in action movies. But there was no time to admire what I had just done. I put it into gear and sped off. I could see the creatures emerge from the shadows, but I kept driving. At a turn, I had to slow down a bit. At that moment, a small faceless creature with the anatomy of a kangaroo jumped up on my windshield. Before it could punch through, I stopped suddenly, launching it into the wall. I quickly turned again and continued my escape. I was able to evade most of them though the dog-like creatures were not far behind me. I was confident enough to keep at it like this. My fuel tank was full, and I had enough caffeine and adrenaline in me to last a few hours before sunrise. Though my confidence faded as I saw the creature in the sky. You've got to be kidding me, I said as I saw a massive winged creature. It looked like a massive bat. I could discern through the darkness that it had human skin and that goddamn smile. I was on a long road, so I was driving as fast as the car was able to. The creature managed to keep pace somehow, and it positioned itself behind me, slowly descending. I could see it in the mirror. It opened its claws, ready to grab the car. No, you won't. 
I started zigzagging as much as I could. At the speed I was going, it risked toppling over the car, but I had no choice. I was approaching the highway, that same highway I had the crash not so long ago. The winged beast was still at my tail, but it was unable to grab the car. I saw the part of the road connected to the highway. I could see a wreck in the distance. A thought occurred to me. It's a hunch, but screw it. I straightened the car and increased my speed. The beast above was centimeters from grabbing the car. Then I opened my door and leapt out. The car continued to drive towards the invisible wall at high speed, with the beast right above it. Then... My hunch was right. Neither me or the creatures could get out. The car was crushed, and the creature was bleeding from the high-speed impact. It tumbled down onto the now-complete wreck of a vehicle. It was still alive and was moving. I managed to somehow survive the emergency exit, though I could barely walk now. The creature shrieked in pain, trying to flap its wings and escape. I approached the vehicle and the creature. It tried to grab me with its claws, but it was out of reach. I got out a pack of cigarettes. Sadly, most of them were crushed by my weight at the impact. But I managed to salvage one. I lit it up. I don't know what you are and why you want me dead. It took a long drag, then exhaled towards its face. Though the smoke couldn't reach it, it visibly irritated the creature. But I want you to know I won't go down easily. Burn in hell, you demon spawn. I chucked the cigarette onto the leaking fuel of the car. Its tank was quite full, as I had mentioned. The flame spread in an instant, engulfing the entire creature. Its shrieks intensified, and it soon died down as the creature was finally put out of its misery. I sat down and watched the flame and carcass of the beast. I was completely exhausted. Soon enough, I heard a noise behind me. The sound of clapping. I got on my feet and turned around aiming my pistol toward the origin of the sound. Out of the darkness emerged the faceless man in the black suit and top hat. He stared at me while he slowly clapped. I attempted to shoot him, but he dodged the bullets with incredible speed. He stopped, put his hands behind his back, and spoke with a booming, deep voice that came from everywhere, and yet, at the same time, from nowhere. You have exceeded my expectations. I am impressed. Who the hell are you? What are you? Why are you doing this? The questions rushed out of my mouth with great speed. My, my, the curiosity. I am known by many names, in many languages and cultures, but they all have a universal meaning. The devil. <laughs> its laugh was ominous. I could feel its laugh in my chest. It was deep. Really deep. I think a devil is an adequate description for you, faceless freak. I said defiantly. Faceless. I like that. As for your other question, why? Well, simply put... I was bored. You humans love those survival simulations, so I thought of putting together a true survival experience. He said as he stretched his arms out, as if presenting something great he had made. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Forget it. Is there a way out of here? I asked. Hmm. Well, yes. If you are entertaining enough, I might as well let you go. Otherwise, you'll be stuck here until you die. Entertaining? I'm not here to entertain you. I don't give a single shit about you. Am I even alive? You're the devil, as you said. How can I believe you? 
For all I know, this is hell. I can confirm you are alive and well. And you can trust me. I don't want you to die just yet. Well, unless you show incompetence, that is. I don't control those beings fully. Also, your family and friends are fine and well, if you are curious. They do not know that you have vanished. For the question if this is hell, it is more like a... Hmm, pocket dimension. Yes, that would be an adequate description in your language. What do you mean they haven't noticed I vanished? This is going to be my final answer to you. I made an identical copy of you. He's not you, per se, but rather a replacement. I'm surprised you haven't asked, why me, as others have. But nonetheless, I must be on my way. Since you are entertaining, I will give you three days of peace. Rest and recuperate. I will be seeing you in three days. Farewell, and good luck. Wait, wait, what do you mean others? Answer me, you fu- Before I could finish the sentence, he vanished as fast as he had appeared. And in the distance I saw a glimmer of light. The sun was rising. I dropped to my knees and punched the floor in rage. You goddamn... I... Entertainment? I'll kill you. You hear me? I'll kill you. I screamed it. I will find him and I will kill him. Even if he sends the armies of hell itself onto me, I will not stop until I have his head. That is my promise. A pledge. Faceless. I am not your toy. After that incident, I managed to somehow get myself back to the city. I found a local clinic where I patched myself up as much as I could. I ate and slept. Then I got my hands on a new car. I repeated the same thing. I scavenged for weapons and supplies. Then, as I was driving to the other side of the city, I found a gold mine. The military base. I rammed the entrance with the car, and I flipped that place upside down. I found military food, and some other useful things. But I found that the armory was locked tight, and I didn't know where to get the key for this lock. Then an idea popped into my head. I did find a jar of ferrum trioxide, or in other words, rust, and a bag of KNO3 or saltpeter at an agricultural shop. And if my knowledge of chemistry was correct, if those two combined, we got thermite. I tested my hypothesis, and sure as hell, it worked. I found a small plastic bag and mixed the rust and saltpeter. Then I placed it on top of the lock, and holding my lighter under it for a full minute. Then it finally ignited, melting the lock and unlocking the metal door. Upon opening it, the sunlight illuminated the large room. A toothy grin formed on my face as I saw its contents. Assault rifles, pistols, heavy machine guns, and the golden beauty outshining them all an M2 Browning 50 cal machine gun. It couldn't fit in the car, no, but my gaze went to the parking lot of the base. A large military truck beckoned me towards it. I'll be having some fun as well, faceless. Thank you for listening to Whisperwood Stories. If you enjoyed, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe down below. Do you have a story that you'd like me to read here? Consider commenting 
or sending it to whisperwithsubmissions at gmail.com. The story in this video was read and slightly altered with the permission of the author. Thank you again for listening, and be sure to check out the original Reddit post. Don't let the shadows get too close. <laughs>